Today, we're talking about a potentially revolutionary new metric coming to CPU and GPU monitoring. It's called GPU Busy, and it gives us some insight to what happens here in the frame rendering pipeline. Historically, this is an area where consumers lose any visibility, and a new addition to an open source tool called PresentMon will be adding that transparency. And it's also getting an interface with a real-time overlay added, similar in some ways to Afterburner, just with some different metrics. We already use this tool, and so do most reviewers. It's just getting updated with a new metric, and that metric has a clear potential to be as big as 1% low and 0.1% lows and frame time data within the review space. And frame times were the last major review revolution, so we're due. GPU Busy helps to have a clear understanding of where CPU or GPU bottlenecks exist, and it also opens a floodgate for much deeper future insights that could potentially involve things like GPU memory pressure or other limiters for performance. This will be a tactical discussion about how rendering generally works canonically in a pipeline, and it'll focus on the educational aspects of understanding how game graphics get shown to the screen via the CPU and GPU. So to talk about this metric, we need an expert to help explain the rendering pipeline first, and then GPU busy. We'll be joined by someone who's talked with me about this very topic seven years ago, back when he worked at NVIDIA. And although he's doing engineering at Intel these days, Tom Peterson is ultimately an enthusiastic engineer who can help us understand how the pipeline works and what GPU busy does. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace and visiting squarespace.com slash gamersnexus will give you 10% off your first purchase with them. We've built a number of our own websites with Squarespace, including our recently launched gamers.nexus site where we list catastrophic PC hardware failures to inform subscribers of those failures. I built this site personally in a couple of hours by using Squarespace's Fluid Engine to move blocks around visually until I liked it. We also built our store website with Squarespace using its built-in e-commerce tools, and of course we built a website for our CEO Snowflake because she demanded our audience know who really runs the show. Get to the core of your idea and spend less time on web design by signing up at squarespace.com slash gamersnexus or click the link below. We have a pretty cool discussion. So there's some engineering topics, but it all relates to games and a view of the pipeline. GPU busy is big. So, the, so what we're showing here is how does a game frame get generated? And it's pretty simple, right? You start here when you get a new frame started, and the first thing that happens is like game logic. You're doing physics, and you're like manipulating I.O., and you're calculating what does the new game look like. And then it does something called a CPU render, where mm -hmm. you're converting that like game view of the world into commands that DirectX knows. So it's like, you know, compile a shader, use a texture, move some geometry, here's some pixels. And then once that's all set to the kind of DX pipeline, there's a command called present, which is the last thing mm. the render does. And once present's called, then DX runs, the driver runs, it does its compiling, all that kind of stuff. And once all the commands are generated by the driver and stuff, it sends it down to the GPU, which actually begins to draw pixels, does all the mathematics. Now, the, the next thing that's happening is the game begins the next frame after a period of waiting. And it'll do and the we'll, we'll talk more about this in a little bit, too. Well, this is the key thing. Like, yeah. why is it waiting, right? right? And then similarly, why is the render so long? And, and the key thing is this frame time is measured between these two presents. And uh, PresentMon already reports that as milliseconds between presents. So at the end of the day, there's a lot of interesting things happening in this wait, and there's a lot of interesting things happening in this render. But the key thing is, how does the render compare to the frame time? And let's, let's bring it back one step more basic to just frame times. When we present a bar chart, that typically shows frame rate. So we'll show average, we'll show 1% lows, 0.1% lows. Frame rate is uh, an abstraction away from the base metric of time. Yeah, this is the computer generating a frame, then it's waiting for the GPU to draw the frame, and then the frame goes on the screen. You just do this over and over and over, and that's what the, mo the motion of a game is. Right, and then the new stuff, I think you have next. Yeah, let's go on to the slide. And we're going to come back in detail on all this stuff in a, in a yeah. minute. Yeah. But give me the preview of okay, this. Okay, the preview is blue is what we're all used to. Mm -hmm. Blue is frame time. This is showing you Overwatch 2 1080p. And uh, people are used to like, you know, things that are going up and down and jerky like this are not good because that's generally micro stutter. It's kind of like a jerky feeling. Mm -hmm. But now we're showing you GPU busy. And it's interesting because GPU busy is how long is the GPU rendering. And what you would expect in a perfect world is something more like this, where the CPU and GPU are about the same height. They're nice and tight. That means the CPU is not gating the GPU. But in this case over here, the CPU is doing something. We don't know exactly what, but it's definitely causing the GPU to be less busy. Right. And that's not great. And this tool is, so this is part of PresentMon, which is already publicly available. It's open source. 
Uh, Intel is, I don't know if the only contributor or just the main contributor, well, but... I'm not sure if we're the only one. It is public. Uh, right. There are other contributors, but Jefferson Montgomery's been working on it for years. He's a great engineer. It is open source. People can take a look at it, and we're going to continue that model. And that's actually what I think most reviewers at this point use a version of PresentMon to capture frame data when we're benchmarking games. So uh, basically, uh, Tom's update here is, hey, we're taking this thing that everyone's already using, we're adding to it. Making it better. Yeah, and so this GPU busy metric, a, a simple way to think of one of the most immediate uses as an end user, if you're really into stats and things that you have no control over, but you want to understand why performance is the way it is, uh, you can think of the gaps as giving you some insight as to where might a particular type of bottleneck be occurring. Yeah, exactly. I think is the, the simplest It is, and, and then you can take action to try to make this look better. Like sure. if you see the GPU line, and we'll talk all about this in the presentation, but when it's not balanced, that's not the end of the story. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And to uh, also give a baseline, so um, I asked you this question earlier, but the idealistic perfect world version of these two lines, what yeah. does that look like? There's no perfect, but the way right. I like to think about it is, in general, when you have a decent sized GPU load, you should expect this to be basically on top of each other. Right. Right. You don't want the GPU limiting the CPU. You don't want the CPU limiting the GPU. You want it to be sort of balanced. Sure. We talked about that in, in a Q2 balance build update where we mm -hmm. basically did a whole bunch of testing and said Core i5 is the right CPU for a 750. Mm -hmm. This data will help you understand why. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about now we've done a DX11 update. The summary, right, it's 22% yeah. faster on DX11, 26% faster for percentiles. Now the cool thing is it's 22% faster on Core i5 based systems but 11% faster on Core i9 based Yeah, systems. so this this is actually really interesting. One of the things we'll talk about with the PresentMon update is there's some change to uh, ability to identify things like driver overhead. Absolutely, driver overhead, absolutely. Right? Which right now I think is the catch-all. I don't know what's happening, exactly. but something's wrong. Exactly, yeah, that's a good way to think about it. But I think this is kind of like a conundrum. Mm. Like why 22% on Core i5, but less on Core i9? I mm. So what we did is uh, updated PresentMon to help people understand a little bit more. So it's like the next click down on GPU performance without getting a doctorate in graphics architecture, right? right? Sure. All right, so here we go. So this is what everybody's seen before. This is frame time. Um, and uh, you know we know already, we talked about this picture, frame times are moving through, and we've got GPU render, and we've got flip. But the key thing I want to highlight is as the game does its stuff, and then the CPU converts it into graphics calls, we've got this weird wait. Now the wait can happen for a lot of different reasons. It can happen because you know DX is doing some stuff, or it can happen because the driver is doing right. some stuff, or it could happen because you're waiting on a prior render to free, you know free up resources. So digging into this wait is kind of an interesting thing to do. Similarly, we don't really know what's happening with the GPU render. It's like when the GPU began its work until the GPU finishes work, but it can be stalled for a whole bunch of reasons. So what are what are some examples of Let's go into that. Like mm -hmm. in GPU render, what really is the GPU doing? What are some examples uh, of game graphics yeah. objects it's interacting well, with? Well, the most important thing that's normally happening is think of it like you're running a shader. Mm -hmm. And the way a, a shader program works is it's just a program that's basically saying, I'm trying to draw the color of a pixel. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to take all pixels and, and I'm going to run it in parallel. Mm -hmm all running the same program, but they're all going to get different data, and basically it's a lot of math that you run across a lot, a lot of parallel cores. That's the fundamental thing you're trying to do. But if you're reading a texture, you may not have that texture on the GPU, so you stall to load that oh, texture. Sure. Right? right? Or you may not have uh, fully all of your resources ready to read, so you can stall. Or sometimes there's dependencies between sort of the CPU stuff that's happening and GPU stuff that's happening, and you're stalled waiting on new work. Mm -hmm. So this is greatly simplified, but it's our first attempt to say there's definitely this thing called frame time, which is kind of a, a measure of how, what's happening on the CPU. And now there's this new thing that we're calling GPU busy, and they ought to roughly be about the same in a well-balanced system. You know, the whole thing's pipeline, so once you complete the render, you put it on the screen, and while you're showing the new frame, you're rendering the next frame. So let's talk about buffering and flipping. Okay. Uh, for this, what does flip mean in this context? Okay, flip is when you've completed rendering a new frame, you're ready to put it on the screen, but you might have VSync on or you might have you know other things happening in Windows, mm. but eventually you want to show it on the screen, and the reason there's a thing is because that's when Windows is going to flip the buffer that's being displayed to your new image. And you can start reusing what you used to be showing. That old image can be used, that buffer, for new rendering. Wait's cool too. So you, you can imagine the sequence of events is DirectX is doing trans 
translation from the calls, talking to our driver. Mm -hmm. And the driver is kind of converting abstract uh, commands into things that are specific to Intel hardware. So you can almost think of it as a translation layer between standardized DirectX commands and Intel hardware. But it's also doing a lot of context creation. It's doing a lot of resource mm -hmm. management and eventually it starts work on the GPU by sending commands to a hardware queue. Right. right? And so this thing just kind of runs its whole way. So it can get stopped up because the GPU is so busy from the last cycle that it can't take new work. So in which case you would stall here. It could be, it could be stopped because you have to go read from a texture mm -hmm. or you got to go read a shader and recompile it. And that takes a long time before you can begin your work. And so now you're waiting and waiting and waiting for that compile to happen. So lots of reasons why you can wait. Um, and we're going to expose more of that as we continue to build out this tool. Steve already alluded to you want lower, and it's kind of the inverse mm. of FPS, right? Right. So this is showing you GPU busy. Now, the, the cool part about it is in Overwatch 2, there's periods of times when you are balanced. So you could call this sort of GPU limited. And then over here, there are times when you are not, and you could call that CPU limited, mm. right? So this whole CPU, GPU limited thing, this is the next click. To, to show you, are you, right? Yeah, and, and there are ways to approximate it. So, so the simplest way as an end user is like open task manager or something and just look at the load percent. It's not always going to tell you the actual answer, yeah. but for easy cases, that'll probably identify mm -hmm. it. Uh, this, however, as a reviewer, uh, this should give us some additional tools to try and explain the results we have, yeah. which I think is important because uh, end of the day, the, the raw number is what really matters for how does it perform, but it's nice to try and actually know why. Yeah, I think so. Because it also helps to identify like scenarios. Well, CSGO is a great example where we had a frame time plot in our review of the ARC cards. Uh, CSGO was problematic. More recently, when we <laughs> retested it, uh, when we retested it, and I think it was the February update. That's DX9 update, yeah. Uh, D DX9, yeah. Uh, it was functionally resolved as compared to launch, mm -hmm. especially. Mm -hmm. And so having tools like this uh, allows us to say, is this a, a, a solvable issue? That's another right? way to look at it, right? Or is it, for example, if it's a game issue, uh, you're no longer really reviewing the GPU, you're, you're benchmarking the game. game. Yeah, yeah, and you can you can isolate by looking across multiple GPUs or multiple CPUs or maybe mm -hmm. even multiple settings, get a better sense of what's going on. All right, so now digging into a little bit, what is happening in that region where it's misbalanced? In this case, you would normally do game and then render, and now you have a long wait for any one of those millions of reasons. But eventually, the GPU starts, and so there's this, in this picture, you're obviously doing some compiling or loading textures, mm. and eventually the GPU starts rendering. Then once the render is complete, the game starts again. And in this case, there's no queuing because the GPU is idle, basically, so work goes directly down to the GPU. But this would tell you, hey, there's something going on. It's not, it's not running optimally on the GPU. I either have something in the system that's mm. not working, or the driver's got a problem, or the game's got a problem. Another way to look at it is in this case, where this is showing our old driver for DX11 with Overwatch 2. This is our new driver. And you can see right away, we fixed a lot of this CPU overhead that was present. But you would normally look at this and say, it just got faster. Mm. But you wouldn't be able to really say anything about why. Until now, with GPU Busy, this is our new driver, and there's GPU Busy. Okay, so yeah. you're, you're seeing right away that the headroom that was lost kind of left on the floor, meaning the GPU is not active. It's all been recovered. And now GPU busy is right on top of frame. Yeah, and this is a good, this is an example of what you want. Yeah, this basically. is what you want yeah. to see. And yeah. this, is, this is why back in the day we said we still have work to do on the software, mm. and we are knocking that down one by one. Does Intel have tools that uh, already provided that information? Yeah, there's okay. a whole, the, the, our driver architects and our mm. performance architects have a whole suite of tools that are looking at much more complex versions than this. Right. Because if you think this is, you know, I don't want to say grossly simplified, but right. <laughs> this is, it's actually happening in a multi-threaded system with multiple different queues and multiple different processes, and that's very complex. This is simplifying So that's, that's information you already had access to for internal use, yes. like improving drivers, yep. I guess. Yep. Uh, and then is this just the hey we we want to present some version of this publicly? Yeah, we want to we want to up level the conversation, mm -hmm. right? So that people can start understanding hey what CPU should I buy and yeah. why or what GPU should I buy and why? And then maybe is there is this game broken? Yeah, you know, what's going on? So simple version of the question: Where do you see this going? Because the more in depth version is 
uh, originally, sort of before I was really reviewing stuff, mm -hmm. the, the primary metric was just average FPS. Mm -hmm. I guess, depending on where you were, sometimes it was image quality. And then eventually, frame times came into the discussion in mm -hmm. a big way. So PC perspective and, uh, and tech report were front running a lot of that. And so do you see the direction you're going with this uh, becoming the next step on that? Or I, 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 I'm not sure, honestly. Yeah. I'm really not sure. I think, I think we're going to find that there's a lot of interesting things here, and it's going to expose some inefficiencies. There's going to be some pain. Some people mm -hmm. are going to get embarrassed. But uh, you know, there's going to be some, uh, you know, some hurts. But I do think it's going to make us all better and smarter and better appreciators of the technology. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm an enthusiast. Mm -hmm. So this, for me, is just great. But I, I'm, I'm very curious how it's going to be received by the community. Yeah, we'll do, I don't know if it'll be this video or not, but we'll look at the user, the demo, interface, yeah, yeah, user yeah. interface as well for the public. Uh, what's your next one? Okay, so this is uh, it, what happens when it looks balanced, right? Sure. So again, we talked about weight, and now in this case, the GPU render is happening, and it's taking the full time of the frame time. Now, there's a lot going on here because this is showing you a GPU limited case, and there's queuing that's happening here that I'm not showing because it gets too complicated. Sure. But let's just say that when you are uh, GPU busy and frame time approximately the same, that means you're either balanced or you're GPU limited. So uh, now this is digging into the next level. This is showing you 1080p low, Counter-Strike 2. And in this case, you can see GPU busy with these spikes above it. This is zoomed in, uh, and it's smoothed by yeah, the Yeah, so what's our scale here? We're at a tenth of a... Yeah, so like this is a frame, this is a frame, this Got is it. a frame. Okay. So it's a little bit misleading because it all looks curvy, but it's just individual frames. Yeah. But you can see GPU busy is generally flat, and there's still these spikes, so this is frame times. So this is not going to be a great experience. Now, in this case, I would say the GPU load is super light. What happens if I change it to ultra? So in ultra, you're so we just moved from what were low we to ultra. Okay, low to ultra. Yeah, and yeah. so now the load is much more like six milliseconds, and you can see the CPU has time to get mm. its work done. So it's just an, a, an interesting way to think about how should I tune my system. Right. right, right. Now here's here's both of them at the same time. Again, you can see the CPU can't quite keep up with the GPU. The GPU is done, and the CPU still has work to do. But when the frame the load gets higher, everything kind of balances out. Let me ask because uh, typically when you benchmark GPUs. Uh, you'll present it with the best possible CPU, yeah, right? Yeah. To limit bottlenecks on the CPU. Yep. Why am Why? I using Core i5? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we do the same thing. So we use a Core i7 or a Core i9 mm -hmm. often when we're doing benchmarking internally. What we found is that's not what end users do. Mm -hmm. And as you can see right away uh, all through this presentation, there's huge amounts of optimi optimizations that you need to do on a Core i5 that you would not necessarily see on a Core i7. Okay. So for us, we're trying to be more uh, responsive to the community that's attaching uh, to a eight, to a 750. So is that when you say need to do on a Core i5? Are you talking? Are the optimizations you're talking about in driver yeah. GPU drivers? Yeah. So then, is it just the difference of a higher end CPU brute forces past the problems? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So if you get if you imagine an infinitely fast CPU, mm -hmm. you can have an infinitely inefficient driver. Okay. As you have an infinitely lower, you know, a, a more moderate CPU, right. then you have to really fix a lot more things that are inconsequential. Mm. Or coincidentally, like, like if you think about it the other way, if you have a really low performing GPU, then you're 100% always going to be limited by that GPU, and it hides a lot of the CPU inefficiencies. Yeah. When we get into the discussion of driver overhead, mm -hmm. just to bring that in for a second, uh, sometimes you'll see GPU performance change, or let's just take the, the traditional examples. So mm -hmm. let's just take AMD and NVIDIA, because Intel wasn't in the game yet when I'm bringing this example up. Uh, AMD and NVIDIA traded leadership positions between platforms in ways that weren't created by the CPU itself. Okay. So I think our conclusion and some of the other reviewers uh, just sort of said driver overhead, we don't know. Yeah. Right? Can you help me understand what what what, what is that? that is? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can. I think uh, I'm trying to think if I go back this picture here. Let's go back a couple here. Okay. So let's pretend that you did the render on the CPU for the game you're doing, like mm. your and game, and then you're doing render logic. Then you got this long wait. Well, what's happening first is there's DirectX, which the game is talking to DirectX, and DirectX has a bunch of processing it does mm. before it talks to the driver. But at the end of the day, it's sort of translation a little bit. And now the driver has a bunch of work to do 
to get ready to uh, execute on a GPU. Because if you think about it, the DirectX is kind of talking generically, mm -hmm. and it may say, it says things like, use this geometry, use this shader, use these textures, mm -hmm. and then execute, uh, and then synchronize, and then use a different collection of textures. And so it's like this ballet that DirectX is telling our driver. Our driver steps back and says, okay, whew, that's a <laughs> lot, that's a big load, right? So how about if I do a very fast compilation of the shader mm -hmm. and send it down and we'll start rendering, but then in the background I'll start recompiling so that the next time through it'll be much, much faster. Okay. So th if you think about all the work that our driver does, it's multi-threaded, it's doing optimization, it's almost like a JIT, a JIT compiler, where mm -hmm. it's, it's constantly looking for real-time optimizations based on the workload. So that means that this could either be really long or really short, and it could change based on frame to frame. Right. So driver overhead is like, uh, there's a mini operating system that is the driver that basically is looking to find ways to optimize both the work that's happening on the GPU and the work that has to happen in the CPU before the GPU can start. And I'll leave this part out of the discussion for now, but if any of that is uh, interesting to you to learn more, then probably the next thing to look at would be API overhead. <laughs> there you go, so yeah, yeah. That would yeah. be the next one, yeah. which uh, we've done videos about as well. When yeah, DirectX that's actually pretty was, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So let's go back to where we were. So as you can see, different configurations have different, uh, different behavior in Prezema. So let's talk about the new tool. All right, so people are familiar with the idea of Presentmon. You use Presentmon. Yeah. And today it's, it's kind of an SDK or a low-end service, and it's available on GitHub and it's open source. Well, we've taken that and enhanced it. So now we're introducing Intel Presentmon beta, and it's a beta, but it's an end user tool that's uh, sort of user focused for mm -hmm. the first time. It's got an overlay, it's completely configurable. It integrates telemetry. So now if you're using like an NVIDIA card, it'll use the NVIDIA telemetry. If mm -hmm. you're using an AMD card, it'll use AMD telemetry. It's multi-vendor and open source, supports all the APIs, DX11, DX12, DX9, Vulkan, and uh, command line for folks that are doing uh, command lines. And uh, it does support developers with existing code. So like if you're a uh, cat frame X guy or, yeah. or your your uh, frame view from NVIDIA, mm -hmm. we're not stopping that support. It's still available in the GitHub they repository. Could, right, they could still integrate. Yeah, so these pictures over here are what it looks like. There's a little configuration UI. And here is the transparent overlay. You can put it as an overlay. You can stick it in a window. But it's super cool. I really like it. And it's taking a lot of the concepts that we've been talking about, like percentiles mm -hmm. and now GPU busy, and it graphs it in in real time as you're playing a game. Yeah, so I think the the closest analog is probably Afterburner or something where you have the overlay yeah. and you have the Riva Tuna statistics server. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully this has an easier name to say than Riva Tuna <laughs> <laughs> statistics yeah, server. Yeah, yeah. But present one. Yeah. So um, so this is more consumer facing side yeah. of if you want metrics while you're yep. playing the game. Yep. Yeah. There is an SDK for developers. So we've taken all the calculation stuff that's a little bit of a pain to do and we've built it into a new service. Um, so you can easily get all the classic presentmon stuff, mm. plus you can get all the averaging and smoothing and, and uh, sta sort of standardizing calculations. Do you have uh, a next step in mind? what you add after this? I do, I do. Okay. Um, well, you know, it all, it all goes back to those two blobs we talked right. about. GPU busy and that weight. Yeah. And so my hope, and I, I think the team's working on it now, is how can we do something that's gonna break those down and be insightful, mm -hmm. right? And the way I think about it is we could find the reasons that we're busy or find the reasons that were stalled, and that would be multi-vendor, right? It would be right. looking across all vendors, and then do it like a kind of like a vector of delay. And I think that so would help people understand. Let's do a, if we could do like a hypothetical example of yeah. if that's integrated. Can you walk me through? Uh, so we we have a breakdown of GPU weight. We have um, either some particularly good or pr particularly problematic result, mm. and we dive into the metrics that don't exist yet for yeah. GPU weight. <laughs> What what do those look like? You know, how can you use that to come to some kind of yeah? What, more is, advanced what does that do for you? Yeah. yeah, right. Well, the way I think about it is, I want I want to help two different audiences. Mm -hmm. One is folks like you and me that want to just appreciate the technology a little bit better and maybe be be able to give a little bit more deep uh, review of a, a particular sure. particular game or and look across CPUs and look across GPUs and have a better understanding. But I also want to help end users by saying, hey, you know what? This game would run much better if you would just turn down the textures okay. because you're seeing memory pressure. Right. And I can, we can make it very explicit how much 
delay are you adding because of memory pressure? So, so would that effectively, would that uh, present itself as a millisecond number also, each of these things? It might, it might. I, I don't know because sure. you know, we're speculating. Right. I, I think if you think about, um, it might be a vector of, of, th of reasons that are causing delays during these periods of time. And you could do some kind of like pie chart of reasons. Yeah, and right. see so you like look that. at it, spent whatever, 60% yeah. of the time working on textures, yeah. maybe lower the yeah. texture quality. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and like we could probably do that uh, in real time, so mm -hmm. that you would see almost like a, uh, and you're making me guess of what this thing's gonna look like, but well, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I can totally imagine like a collection of vectors that are sort of showing you where your current mm -hmm. bottlenecks and what percentage of time you're bottlenecked. Yeah, yeah so, so then I guess to try and relate it back to, uh, this is, it, everything that's already being launched is useful for us mm -hmm. in the review community. Um, the interface is useful for end users, but in terms of, I'm looking for, for everyone watching, like, so why do I care? Why great, I great, care? you can have better reviews. Yeah, good for you. Thank you, <laughs> you know, yeah, but how can I use it? So I think, I guess the takeaway there is for people into like settings, tweaking, tuning. Yeah. Um, if you bloat a game like Skyrim with a ton of mods or something, you Much might have more some, transparency about what's happening. Right. right. Yeah. Plus, if you're into telemetry, mm -hmm. this is the first time you're gonna get calibrated, correlated telemetry aligned with frame information. I want to, uh, this word telemetry too, to just get ahead of it. Yeah. Is uh, Intel taking all this information and sending it to home base? No. Okay. <laughs> this is I just, just uh, wanted to clear this, that now. This app does not like spy and communicate. Plus it's open source. Yeah, so yeah. anybody who wants to can look at it and see what's going where. And right. Just, yeah. Telemetry here just in the strictest sense of yeah, useful it's, information. It's, it's, it's information coming from open third party APIs. So mm -hmm. we're not doing any hacking or, but MV API for NVIDIA, I think it's called ADL for AMD and IGCL, uh, IGCL. Intel Controlled Graphics Library mm. for Intel, which is our open API. Mm. So anybody can build apps based on this infrastructure. Anybody can do their own overlays. Uh, and as I said, it's all available on GitHub. Okay, so that's the overview of PresentMon and the tool. And then we are going to do a walkthrough of the user interface and what it looks like on a system. So that'll be a separate video. Uh, my team will produce some additional information that we'll put in there as well. But otherwise, Tom, thank you for the walkthrough on this one. Great to see you. And we'll see you all in the next video.